So um, I did kind of Eastern medicine for both of my pregnancies. I was told by multiple specialists I could never have kids. I now have my second boy, which is amazing. And both times I kind of went into like an alternative space in order to get pregnant. Mm. Um, my most recent one was after a psilocybin experience. And I felt like I was Whoa. clinging on to some kind of whether it was like a narrative that I couldn't get pregnant or like a fear around um, maybe like having a second kid and, and just like a lot of family stuff. So I was like, I just want to release that because there's something that's like blocking the soul from coming into the world. And I kid you not, I was trying for almost a year. Um, wow. Can I ask you, what was the what was the Western medicine reason that you couldn't so have children? So I have Graves disease okay. and I have PCOS and endometriosis. PC oh. So oh, okay. all of that, they're like, it's just not going to happen. My, What's um, Graves disease? I don't know what that is. Hyperthyroid. Um, oh. And it's an autoimmune version oh. of the thyroid condition. Okay. Yeah, so it's just like overactive. So all of those things are like not the best cocktail to create a baby. So yeah. I was like, it's just not going to happen. My hormones were like non-existent. I had no progesterone. My T was super low Whoa. and you need progesterone for the egg to kind of attach mm. to the uterine lining. So there's just like, it can't happen. Yeah. Um, I did my psilocybin journey and within two weeks I was pregnant. And that was, wow. can you describe what, in, what that psilocybin journey entailed? Like one dose. And then the other thing that I find interesting about therapeutic settings with psychedelics is you wear an eye mask. Yeah. Necessary. And every other, and anytime we do it recreationally, you're not wearing an eye mask. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done a psychedelic and worn an eye mask, but I'm like, that has um, to be a totally DMT, different. DMT, you have to close your eyes to not, to oh, do it. Like, yeah. otherwise it doesn't, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Like, I mean, I didn't use an eye mask. I just went like this, but <laughs> in a dark room, but yeah. same concept. Yeah. The eye mask is nice because it gives you a little bit of pressure. Kind yeah. Of like those heavy blankets, like a weighted blanket. Soothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like those, but um, my experience with it. So I did like a little more than two grams. We did a tea. And the whole ritual before was about an hour. So there was um, like there was chanting and music and like energy release. So if you feel anger or sadness or whatever to like kind of purge that before you go into the space. And then um, my shaman was like playing his drum and his wife was singing and we just laid down on our mats and put our eye masks on Ooh. and just kind of like waited for it to like kind of come on, like kick in. And mm. I remember f getting like this flash like a tiny blue almost like star showing up and then it was like whoosh I was into the universe and mm. it was like there was no me I was just <gasps> like observing and I was like what is happening don't try to don't try to di dissect it don't try to sure. intellectualize it because I didn't want it to go away um, and then mine was a lot more physical. So I immediately started getting like really severe like tremors. Like my whole body started Ooh. shaking. Mm. Um, and then I immediately was like, okay, well, animals in the wild do this. This is the how pent we're- pent up energy. Right, we're releasing our, like resetting our nervous system essentially yeah, and like yeah. getting rid of old trauma. So I just let that go on for however long it was. Um, and then I remember like seeing my, so at the time I only had my one son and he, I saw him come in and I was like, what are you doing? Like, you need to go back to your body. Like this, I'm working on stuff so I like sent him away oh, interesting. um that's so cool yeah and then like I just the rest of it was just this overwhelming feeling of like peace and joy and that was kind of why I wanted to go in so I was like this was an incredible experience for me and then after the fact when it started to wear off like my whole body was like popping and cracking and he's like these are all releases like that's all that that is so it's like wow. even though you didn't have this crazy visual experiences that which is what you wanted going in like you got what you were supposed to get and I think that's important too is we go mm. in and we're like oh I want the same experience that my friend had and it's like well that was their experience that's sure. not for you so that's it's, not what's best for you right like yeah. you never have a bad trip like you have the trip you're supposed to have yeah mm -hmm. wow and then what, you have a what question Mike? Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. um, uh, and then for for the kind of group setting that you went, like, how did you decide like what group to go in? Because I think like other people's, like, if you do a, a psychedelic in a group of people yeah. who have like a negative energy, that can. I've like definitely had like trips interrupted by other people's bad energy mm -hmm. or something they said. And I'm like, I am going to smack you in the face right now because you just ruined my trip, mm -hmm. you know, because you you put this like negative concept into my brain. Yeah. And like, I think there is like, I do have obsessive compulsive disorder, but like nowhere near that story Christina shared. Like, and I think, uh, but I think like uh, there's something about psychedelics that almost puts you in what I would explain as an obsessive compulsive disorder state because you're going to ruminate on whatever you need to ruminate on, which is like what it's living with OCD all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's actually there's a lot in common. So it's interesting that something that makes you kind of feel obsessive can also cure that. Um, but yeah, like so how did you like kind of vet and vet like the shaman vet the setting? Because like there's a lot of stories about shamans mm -hmm. 
touching people yeah. you know yeah. like uh, to me like as a woman like i just would never go alone at least with a male shaman like it's yeah. just not happening for me mm-hmm. no that makes sense too and you want to make sure that you're you feel safe going into it i think right. setting that foundation is imperative um we were working with a shaman for years at this point so okay. he is like family to us and we were um. just doing like private one-on-ones he would come over and we would do like guided meditations and sound mm-hmm. baths and energy healing so we had been working with him personally like my husband and i um oh, okay. and then he yeah. had started like sharing that he was doing these retreats mm-hmm. my husband had done like i think like three with him at this point mm-hmm. and they were like men's groups so um like i didn't go to any oh, of that's those nice that they have men's retreats yeah. in the of that nature yeah, yeah. Oh, that it's so, so important yeah and i think like doing something similar in like the women's space would be so healing right yeah. it's like there's kind of this vulnerability that each of us can have if we're in a container that is like just shared experience of being a man or just shared experience of being a woman that maybe you wouldn't feel um like you didn't want to like take up time or whatever the reason mm-hmm. was like it just allows it gives permission for that yeah um so like i think vetting is important is important from like knowing someone that has gone through that or like that program or that retreat center so not like googling something or finding a best-selling author and just mm-hmm. being like oh they must be good like don't necessarily let that be your bar of entry so try to find someone that you know that has pers- personal experience with that shaman 